Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning into this ASMR soft spoken true crime video. I've been gone again and I'm so sorry. This has been the most insane month. I'm not even going to go into everything that's happened. A lot has happened, but just a little prequel. This morning, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning to noise in my house. Obviously, I watch true crime, so I'm scared as fuck. We go up the stairs and see this little thing drop from the ceiling and it turns out to be a chipmunk <laughs> in the house doing some kind of mission impossible crawling along like the like there's like a little bit of like the ceiling so, we were trying to get this chipmunk out. He eventually did run out of the back door, thank goodness. I didn't have to write up a lease agreement, so that's good. But, just weird things. So, I'm sorry for my absence. I'm so happy to be back. And I was thinking about making videos the entire time, so today we're going to be doing a case I've never heard. It's one where there wasn't much information slash not much information in English, so I tried my best to get all the accurate information I could. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Choi Sung Hee and Kim Yoon Suk. So in 2015, couple Choi Sung Hee, who was 33 years old, and Kim Yoon Suk, who was 35 years old, got married in South Korea. The two lived in an apartment in Busan, South Korea after getting married. Kim Yoon and his friend opened a restaurant and Choi Sung Hee was a successful actress in a small theater. On May 31st, 2016, Kim Yoon's father reported the couple missing after not hearing from them for several days. In 2016, the couple at this time was six months into their marriage and it was reported that Chao Sung he was a few months pregnant. After police received the call from his father, they went to the couple's apartment to do a wellness check. Upon arrival, it was found that there was no one in the house, only a puppy. After police entered the they found the dishes in the kitchen had not been cleaned. There were some groceries found from the supermarket on the table, untouched. There was no sign of foul play in the home. There was nothing missing besides the couple's computers, phones, and passports. At first, the police thought the two had traveled abroad, but 
the commune stat said that this puppy was treated like a child by the couple. And if that they were going to go away, they would have had someone watch the puppy. The police then retrieved the entry and exit records of customs and found no trace of the two in those records. Their car was also still parked in the garage. The police visited the couple's workplaces to see if anyone had heard from them, and no one had heard from the couple in four days. They were able to identify a timeline for the couple's movements the night they were last seen. So on March 27th, 2016, Choi Soong attended a drama class and then stopped by a local convenience store on her way to pick up, on her way home to pick up some ramen and sweets. Kim Yoon spent the night out drinking with co-workers after working at the restaurant. The police then obtained the surveillance videos from the apartment. CCTV in the apartment building elevator captured Choi Sung returning home around 11.30 p.m. with the groceries she purchased. Kim Yoon was captured around 3.45 a.m. In the elevator, returning home, at, returning home carrying a small black bag. Both appeared normal and not in distress. But despite having at least 70 police officers review the CCTV footage, no one could find any video evidence of the couple ever leaving the apartment. Afterwards, the police investigated the surveillance of the streets, buses, subways, and other places around the community, but still found nothing, and the two had seemingly vanished. They began to look into the cell phone records. On May 28, 2016, a day later, the last time they were seen on the CCTV footage. Both the cell phones were used several times. Text messages from her cell phone were sent to her assistant director stating that she would not be ready for the next day's rehearsal because she was feeling ill. The assistant director also received a text message on May 30th stating that she could not perform and she had been admitted into the hospital due to an accident, quote, like last time. The assistant director was suspicious of these texts due to the formality of the language. Usually, they would text pretty casually back and forth. For example, she'd probably say, I ain't gonna be there. XOXO, Joe Sung. The assistant director also states that he was later contacted by someone claiming to be Kim Yoon. He was not a able to identify the voice either way, since he had never spoken to him previously. But he says that the man on the phone explained that she was in the hospital. Investigators 
never found any records of her being admitted to any hospitals in the area. And then also on May 28th, Kim Yoon, his employees say that they received a call from him stating that he would be off work indefinitely and would send funds to keep the restaurant open. Some state that the employees said that the caller did not sound like him, but the voice sounded extremely exhausted, which led police to believe it may have been someone pretending to be him. And then on June 2nd, 2016, the couple's cell phones were shut off. Police records placed Kim Yoon's phone in Busan that day, and Choi Sung's phone was located in Seoul, which was roughly 250 miles away from Busan. On March 11th, 2019, police reached out to the public asking for any information about the missing couple. Kim Yoon's co-workers revealed that they believed he had a second phone that he kept hidden from his wife that he had used to talk to his ex-girlfriend known as Yoon. Kim Yoon and Yoon's relationship allegedly ended due to disagreement between the two families, but Yoon, his ex-girlfriend, harbored strong feelings towards Kim Yoon after their breakup. Yoon went on to marry another man, but divorced after one month because her husband allegedly believed she was cheating on him with Kim Yoon. Yoon eventually got remarried, and she and her new husband moved to Norway. After a miscarriage, Yoon allegedly started contacting Kim Yoon again and blamed him for ruining her life. She reportedly sent threatening messages to both Kim Yoon and Choi Sung. Police discovered that Yoon had traveled to South Korea with her husband from Norway on May 5th, 2016, shortly after Choi Sung allegedly announced her pregnancy to her friends. Suspiciously, Yoon did not tell her friends or family that she was in Korea, and she even stayed in motels, and saunas paying with cash. This indicated to police that she didn't want her presence in the country to be known. Even more suspiciously, she exchanged her ticket to fly back to Norway earlier than planned on June 7th which was five days after the police started their initial investigation into the couple's disappearance. It was also five days after our, the cell phones turned off. Although Yoon's involvement in the disappearance felt likely, Given the timing and her behavior, there was no evidence to officially link her to the couple's disappearance. The police would later try to extradite Yoon from Norway, wanting her for questioning. But despite being arrested, Yoon was able to fight the request. And because of lack of solid evidence linking Yoon 
Norwegian court ruled in favor of Yoon, deciding that she could not be extradited. And so the police have to hope that Yoon voluntarily come to South Korea for questioning. Yeah. On September 2016, a middle-aged woman asked a nurse at a physician's office if she could pick up a prescription for her daughter-in-law. The nurse looked up the information and found that the person is missing, so she called the police. This was for Chao Sung. So, after the police were called, they discovered that this woman was not Chow, Chow's mother-in-law, but indeed it was her mother-in-law's sister. And when police asked her, she stated that she only wanted to find out if Chow Sung had recently picked up her medication or not, in order to find a lead, and police believe this is generally what she was doing, which like, girl, we are being very nosy, and why would you do that, Miss Jessica Fletcher, out, ready to solve this case. (laughs) So, the disappearance of Kim Yoon and Choi Sung is still unsolved. And because police cannot find the remains of the couple, they are listed as missing and not dead. And the families of Choi Sung Yee and Kim Yoon Suk are still hopeful for answers. So, let's get in. First one being that they ran away voluntarily. So police did eventually conclude that there were very few blind spots that could have allowed the couple to exit without appearing on the CCTV footage. The general belief is that the couple could have taken the emergency exit stairs to the first floor of the parking lot, which are not covered by CCTV cameras. However, there is a camera right outside, right at the entrance of the stairs, with only a small blind spot, which would have required someone to walk directly under the camera. So, they found it was possible to leave the apartment, but it would have required two people to walk down 15 flight of stairs and pass a specific route to bypass all 22 cameras. So this would indicate that those people would have to have been walking and able and it would have been even more difficult for someone to carry a body and take that route. So based on this theory, they believe that the couple possibly left in fear for their lives from the threats received by Yoon, his ex-girlfriend, And they just wanted to start fresh and get an opportunity to live in peace and start their family. However, the couple was not seen on any city cameras outside of the apartment. And they did not drive off in their vehicle, which was located in the garage. Apparently, the city is pretty heavily covered by cameras, 
times, so this felt very unlikely. It was also known that the couple was pretty low-key. They didn't have any debt or issues. All of their credit cards had not been used since. And they have a decent amount in savings that have not been touched. So, just a few things I want to sprinkle in. The text message received from the assistant, the director assistant, that referred to an accident saying, quote, like the last time. Apparently, this was likely linked to Chao Sung's previous hospitalization from an overdose that she had taken while she was managing depression. But my question is, how many people would have known that? It seems like very personal information. And if it was somebody pretending to be her sending that text, which a lot of people think, they would have had to know that personal information. Also, with the security cameras, someone would have had to know where the blind spots were, which again feels like very specific information. When I lived at an apartment, I would have never known where the blind spots were. Even if I saw the cameras, I would have no idea what viewpoint they could see. So it just feels so specific. But it does make me think of those cases where people carry out bodies in like bags and suitcases and can be can bypass security cameras through that. The next theory is the ex-girlfriend who, whether she did it or not, girlfriend sounds like she needs some kind of help, but the primary suspect is his ex-girlfriend known only as Yoon. So, she had apparently sent threatening texts. She was in the area during the time, which just adds in extra suspicion. The way I see this being done is maybe she somehow broke into the apartment prior to them both arriving, or before Kim Yoon arrived, and either harmed or tied up Choi Sung when she arrived home and then waited for Kim Yoon to come home hours later and killed him. He may have been drunk, which allowed her to carry this out. I don't think she'd be able to take on both of them at the same time. Um, I don't know what she looked like, but some believe that she must have had help from potentially her family to carry out the murders and disposal of the bodies. The other thing about the cell phones that I really want to know is were they both shut off at the same time or different times? I wasn't able to figure that out, but that'd be a big indicator if somebody had help or did this by themselves. Because if the phones were in different locations and turned off at the same time, and they were 202 miles apart, so that's a good amount of distance, then that would tell me there was multiple people involved. I don't even know how long it takes to drive 202 miles. I guess, she, hmm, could you do that in a day? That's a, that's a long day. That might push more towards multiple people, but I didn't see a time when the phones were turned off, so. But my only problem with the theory of just the ex-girlfriend is if 
find it really unlikely she would have been able to carry two bodies from the 15th floor with all of those cameras. I also really want to know if police ever looked into the CCTV footage just around the time of the disappearance to see if she was ever captured at any point. But it seems like cameras were, and how to use the blind spots. It seems utterly impossible to me, unless she was told. So, that brings us into a theory associated with this one. That is, that Yoon and Kim Yoon did this together, and murdered Choi Sung. That she had planned this out, and she planned to visit Korea, and did not want anyone to know she was there. And he went out with co-workers till the bug crack of dawn, to just like solidify that he didn't do it, or maybe they didn't know how it was going to go, or maybe he wanted her to murder. And maybe he was unhappy with her being pregnant. As we know, there is that high chance that when a woman is murdered while pregnant, it sadly is possible it's the partner. And the fact that he possibly had a second cell phone, as the co-workers said, would indicate they maybe had an affair especially with like her first husband accusing her, maybe this, maybe they, since they separated because of family, they wanted to be together and they just married other people but still stayed together. And this second phone could produce some incriminating evidence that they planned this. And since she had stayed in various places using cash, he may have been able to keep a low profile staying in these areas. They then got rid of the cell phones. He was able to somehow get out of the area. And also, police may have not been able to spot a car that she had rented or had leaving the apartments that wasn't registered to either of them. But my question is, where the fuck is her little hubby from Norway? Or whatever. Because it sounded like she traveled with him. But I am going full lifetime movie with this case. And wondering if anybody knows where he is. And if there's a possibility that Kim Yoon could have gotten on the flight under the disguise of her husband. But that's some real conspiracy movie stuff right there, so. Another thing, or another theory, is that he just did it himself. He would have been the most likely person to know the blind spots of the cameras. He would have known about her previous hospitalization, as that text indicated. There is an interesting angle I saw that there was possibly an accident that happened in which he covered up. She had went off her depression medications in March and didn't pick them up, possibly due to discovering she was pregnant and not being able to take them during pregnancy. 
Maybe there was a medical emergency or a perception of a medical emergency that triggered a panic or incorrect response and resulted in her death. Or possibly he was drunk and an accident occurred. There's also a little bit of information I saw that maybe Kim Yoon's father had known that something happened. And now I didn't see this reported consistently, which is why I put it in the theories. I don't want to say it's facts just because it wasn't consistent. One source claimed that his dad was the one who filed the missing persons report, was very active and passionate about finding them at first, but later in a TV interview apparently he said, quote, I will protect my son and seemed disinterested in finding them. He also apparently never mentioned the missing couple to Chao Sung's mother. Now I'm not sure this is true or not, but it could point to the father knowing something happened either when it happened or afterwards and it resulted in him protecting his son. But police have also never ruled out the possibility of a random assaultant, but overall it feels like this is a high, unlikely case. That is the case of the disappearance of Choi Sung Hee and Kim Yoon Suk. Love to hear your opinions about this case. I'm so happy that I made this video and I'm really hoping I can be consistent, but you guys are the best. Seriously, thank you. But I hope you are having a good day or good night wherever you are. And then you have a good day tomorrow. And I will see you in my next video.